Hello my friends, welcome to Lug Nuts. Today we're going to be looking at the 2023 Ford Maverick Hybrid. Uh, this is Ford's small pickup. I believe it was introduced last year. That was its first full production year. Um, and this is the 2023 model. No real changes. But uh, this is my first time driving it. And yeah, it's a handsome thing, isn't it? It's, you know, I mean, it's a small pickup truck. Depends on whether or not you like that sort of thing. Um, I, I drive a full-size pickup, F-150, no less, every day. And this has been a... A revelation i guess kind of reminds me of the rangers of the 90s the 80s and the 90s um the good looks sort of start at the front uh, it's got a very pleasing face sort of shares ford's design philosophy with uh with the rest of their lineup but uh has its own distinct look which i like um a little heavy on the bare plastic on the bottom there but other than that um not too bad at all actually it's nice they, with the this has the black blackout package i think it's called and you get the blacked out ford lo lab logo there which i kind of like uh, the headlights are nice you could sort of get a c thing when you combine uh the whole um unit there and I, I really like that at night it looks really cool actually i should try shooting one of these things at night but it probably wouldn't look very good um anyway yeah this is this is what i've been driving for the last week or so and i really like it it has it has impressed let's take a look at the back seat see what's going on in there now obviously sorry i should say four doors um you don't really buy pickup trucks anymore without four doors unless it's some sort of work vehicle so this certainly comes with four doors being a compact vehicle excuse me as i climb in behind myself you're not blessed with a ton of space in the back i again for reference for those of you who don't watch all my videos uh, i'm five foot eight so i'm pretty short and i have short legs i'm a stubby compact man so we've only got a couple of inches before i'm rubbing the leather the back of on the back of the seats so yeah not a boatload of space headroom is acceptable you actually get a little more headroom than you do leg room which is nice um in the back seat you get power this particular one you get uh, 120 volt 120 volt outlet in the back uh, and you get usb a usb c which is nice nice to have power uh, lots of power options back here you get the requisite cup holder in the center console which is nice and you also get which is something that's really cool a power sliding rear window look at that uh the control is right in the middle of the center console there um but i love that i love the rear window that opens and closes very cool my kids were trying to open it manually and i said huh, yeah this one has power which is really nice um so i yeah, really enjoy that you also get these speakers in the c column here i think this is the c column yeah um out in the back they don't uh they don't bother including them so much in the doors anymore which is interesting i don't know if that's a they do that for packaging reasons or whatever the case may be but uh yeah it's really neat up there actually it's cool so yeah the back seats are largely speaking for children i should think um and perhaps small pets otherwise uh, full-size adults will have a challenge or two something i should highlight that has been a bit of a frustration with this car is this handle here um, let me hop out of the car here so you can have a better look when you're getting in the car like this as an example you slide in you're reaching for it and you will miss this all the time and if the car is at any kind of an angle where the door might open you know based on gravity and stuff sometimes grabbing this can be an issue and if you're parked in tight next to someone else it's something to keep in mind so you're not dinging your neighbor um but yeah i want to mention that is that i i assume if you drove it longer you would get used to that uh, but i am always reaching for this all week long i've been reaching for this and missing it and catching just with one finger that edge so i did want to mention that something else i should mention as we climb into the front seats are this blue interior now i'm still trying to figure out if this is the only color you can get for the interior of this car because i've seen this is the first one i've driven but i have two friends who have them and they both have this blue interior i have to assume you can get a more like traditional black interior but for whatever reason all i've seen so far is blue and when you build it online i don't believe they give you an interior option so i'll try and confirm that but i don't really care for the blue it's a bit much um i just prefer you know some more traditional black and gray you do get gray here of course but i don't know about that blue i really don't climbing into the front seat uh, all right so let's start uh with the interior let's start with the dash cluster shall we so on the left you get um the information you need for your electric drive so it shows you in the green here that's your regenerative braking 
um, and then your power consumption when you're on electric drive or even hybrid mode tells you how much of your uh, power percentage you're using I uh, it tells you <laughs> it's sort of interesting when you're driving the regenerative braking once you come to a complete stop will tell you how much power you've recovered and it's turned into a game for me to see how many times I can recover 100% of the power I'm running at around 50% at the moment um, on the right you get a, uh, a fixed traditional speedometer analog speedometer very cool you get your let's turn the car on shall we uh, you get your full uh, digital information cluster here in the middle and you can change it to whatever you want um, I end up using this screen most of the time because I'm quite interested in a how good is the fuel economy what have I traveled and how much of that's electric and they give you all that information right here so this is the total for the entire time I've had the car I've covered 651 kilometers all, just under half of that is electric and then I've averaged 5.7 liters per 100k um, I just fit, filled it up yesterday because I was close to a gas station. And uh, I have to say, the fuel economy has been great on this thing, really good. Uh, quite a surprise actually, because you don't always expect that. And I've heard the gas powered versions of these can be a little thirstier than you might expect. So there it is. Uh, you get a very compact uh, forward wheel here, audio controls, cruise control, there we go, horn in the middle. Um, and then telephone controls, track audio. They've sort of combined the, uh, the telephone controls with the track selection buttons here which is interesting, I, I've never really thought about that before, but you only really use one at a time, so it's a little bit of efficiency there, which I like. And then this is your menu control to change your internal um, structures. Uh, for reference, here where the uh, headlight buttons are, that's your fuel filler cap release, because I didn't know where that was when I was trying to put gas in it, and it took my son to realize, hey, dad, there's a button right there, because you're a little dim. Um, this is your Ford, I believe this is Sync 4. Uh, this is very similar to the one that I have in my F-150. Uh, it is, it, it's good. It's perfectly fine, actually, um, for what is kind of a budget vehicle, if you will. I mean that with no disrespect. Um, this is a good system. The screen resolution is good. The cam you only get, yeah, so that's the backup camera. Resolution's pretty solid. Um, you know, it's not spectacular, but it's pretty good. Um, I've been driving Nissans for the last two weeks, and those the resolution on those screens is appalling. So this is a nice, uh, sort of a nice middle ground, um, and very useful as well. Uh, moving down, you get your audio controls, etc. Nice buttons and dials, just as it should be. Uh, air vents, which are really cool, actually. I like the way these look. And then you get your uh, environmental controls down here. Start stop, wireless charging, very nice to see. Uh, you can stick. I think this is for holding your phone up while you drive, etc. Right down there, as promised, is the button that opens and closes that rear window we were talking about. Then you get some charging ports. Uh, moving on, you get a dial uh, shifter. Don't know what you think of dial shifters. Um, I'm hit and miss with these sometimes. I, for whatever reason this week, I've been, even when I'm in drive, as an example, drive, um, and I want to put it in reverse, some, for some reason, I keep going to the right, more to the right, and then I expect it to go backward, and it doesn't, it's weird, I don't understand. Uh, but that's probably more me thing than any sort of design issue. So yeah, the dial uh, shifter is right there, uh, very comfortable, even well located, etc. your electric e-brake, and then you get your uh, couple of the driver controls down here, um, and two cup holders, a little spot for whatever you would put in there and then you get more another little spot down here uh, don't leave change in there i can't certainly um, where i live because they'll smash your window for a nickel uh, center storage bin decent sized actually and it's got a little carpet in the bottom there which is cool so there you go oh also in this trim level you get a sunroof how cool is that i just uh, manual of course because you know this is for the great unwashed um but yeah, a regular size sunroof, a really nice option to see in this particular vehicle. I've actually used it quite a bit because if you open this and you open that, you get nice airflow and it works okay and you don't get much buffeting. So that's nice. I dig that. Um, and there it is. That is the interior of the Ford Maverick. Shall we take it for a spin? I can tell you guys what it's like to drive. I think it's time to do that. Let's go. All right, we are on the road. So something I wanted to highlight was the regen the uh, power transmission screen thing here. So this thing will show you where the electricity is going, what drive you're using. We're now in hybrid drive, regenerative braking. As soon as you take your foot off the brakes, it starts to uh, recover electricity, et cetera, and send it to the battery pack under the back seats, which is uh, very cool. Well, it's not really under the back seats, is it? Um, so. Yeah, it's really, uh, it's my son enjoys looking at that and sort of figuring out uh, what's going where. Um, the, oh, make sure I don't crash into anybody. Uh, so let's start with pricing, shall we? So the Ford Maverick starts at 
just under, uh, just over $31,000 Canadian. And that's for the sort of standard, uh, I believe actually that's, start, that's the starting point for the hybrid drivetrain. And then it goes all the way up to, depending on what package you choose, you probably top out somewhere around the mid forties. Um, not, not cheap, but not as expensive as you might imagine. I mean, if you wanted a full size pickup, etc., it's going to cost you well into the sixties now at the current moment in time for, with any sort of decent amount of equipment, especially if you want the hybrid. Uh, so this, this is, yeah, it, it does offer you, you know, relatively solid value. One of the interesting things about this car, if you order the hybrid is you can only have front wheel drive. That's a bit of a bummer. It's not a deal breaker, but it's a bummer. You know, I would love it because when you get the gas powered engines, you can opt for all wheel drive, which is would just make this thing so 365 days a year useful. Um, here in the lower, uh, the greater Vancouver area where I live, it's, I mean, we don't get a ton of snow, so it's no biggie. You know, you put snow tires on it, it'll be fine. But in the rest of the world where they get real seasons, uh, you know, it would be great to have that all wheel drive because it would just make this thing so, so much more versatile while still enjoying the benefits of, uh, of that hybrid drive system. The hybrid system on this thing is phenomenal. I've never seen a vehicle of this relative size and utility because you can do a lot of things even with a small bed like the one this thing has, um, you know, and not expend a huge amount of fuel. You know, I haven't, I haven't been able to really, I don't pound on it, but I, my fuel economy has always been under six liters per 100 kilometers. I did a stretch on the highway and I got it down to 5.3 liters per 100 kilometers. And I wasn't even hyper -miling, I promise you. I was just driving like a human. It was, uh, it was very impressive. Normally, fuel economy stuff can be disappointing. Uh, but this thing is, is very, very good. Very good on gas. The tank is about 50 liters, 52. And yeah, I mean, you can expect to go anywhere from 750 to 900 kilometers. Um, sort of in mixed driving as well. That's not just hyper miling on the highway. So that's pretty phenomenal. And you still get all the benefit of a pickup. Well, most of the benefits of a pickup, I should say. So this, you know, there is debate as to whether or not this is a pickup truck. Um, it looks like a pickup, so for me it is. It's a unibody construction vehicle. So it's built like a car uh, rather than a pickup truck, which is ladder chassis. Uh, for me, I don't, I don't care, it doesn't matter. You know, this is not intended to be a work vehicle. It's intended to be something that you can get great utility from. Uh, you can do, you know, 90% of whatever it is you would do with a normal pickup, you can do it with this thing. You know, if you really think it through, especially for people like myself, we don't use our pickups for, for work, right? We use them for uh, commuting and all this other kind of stuff and picking up fridges from the Home Depot. You can do that just fine with this car. So uh, I think this gives you a, a lot of utility while saving you a ton of money, first and foremost on the purchase price and, uh, and being great on fuel. Another thing, this, uh, another benefit of this car is its size. It's tiny and that's not a criticism. I love that. Driving a full size pickup truck as I do most days, it can be exhausting just to find a place to park it. I, last weekend I went to a wedding at the park underneath the hotel. It was, it was so tight that the wedding was packed, Indian wedding, so there was 9,000 people there. It, there was nowhere to park except this one little spot. I got there late, of course, because I'm horrible. And, and there was one little spot to park where I would never have been able to squeeze the F-150, but the Maverick, I tucked it right in and I had space on either side. It was absolutely fantastic. So driving the Maverick is, is a pretty pleasant experience. It definitely drives like a car. It does not drive like a pickup. And again, that's not a criticism. I like the way it drives. Um, it, you know, it's very smooth. It's easy to, you know, it, the steering isn't heavy, etc. It's very nimble. You can, as I said, get it anywhere you need it to go. Um, and yeah, it's not exhausting, which is really cool. It's not stressful. Any of the things that can sometimes come with driving a full-size car. So I've really enjoyed that about this thing. Um, one interesting thing to note is the transmission. It's a CVT, so you don't get like a, a traditional automatic. This is a, I think they call it an eCVT. I'm not exactly sure what that means. That's obviously to deal with the hybrid component, but uh, what you do, what that, it's strange because when you shift it into gear, you almost have to wait a beat and then it shifts into whatever gear it is you want, whether you're going into reverse or drive or what have you. So that was a little, I mean, you get used to it, but it, it just felt laggy, which kind of, yeah, impacts the driving experience when you're, you know, doing a J turn or whatever the case may be. Other than that though, um, everything is very smooth. 
Um, I'm not a huge fan of CVTs. I think automatic, like traditional automatics do it just fine. Um, but again, nobody listens to me. Yeah. So, you know, I could take it take it or leave it, but uh, it is, it is once you're, you know, moving in the direction you want to go, it's quite smooth and it's really nice. Um, the hybrid system, you know, when it switches on and off, that can be a little, a little rougher than it probably should be. The gas, the 2.5 liter engine that you get is a little louder than you might expect. Um, I should mention power um, figures for this system as well. So you do get a 2.5 liter uh, naturally aspirated gas engine and then you get the hybrid system. So that gives you a combined horsepower of about 190, give or take. Torque figures are a little shady. I can only figure out what the torque, um, what the torque figures are for the gas engine, which is 155, which certainly isn't exactly uh, um, an overabundance, but I couldn't figure out what the hybrid system uh, adds because the electric drive should add quite a bit of torque. That's kind of what they do. Um, so I don't know what to say about that. If you happen to know, or if I just somehow missed it while scouring the internet, please do post up down below. I'd love to know kind of what it tops out on um, with regards to torque. Uh, the power delivery is good. You never really feel like you're lagging too much. I have chirped the front tires once or twice, um, which would be cured with, with a bit of all wheel drive, but that is what it is. I do that in regular cars too sometimes, uh, just when you put on put the gas down uh, a little aggressively. So otherwise, um, it's it's quite good. It doesn't feel underpowered. Uh, I've had four full four full sized adults, pardon me, um, in the car, and yeah, it works just fine. So no problem with pick up and go, any of that kind of stuff. All right, competitors. Well, what who who else makes a small pickup these days? There are only so many of them. Uh, the direct the, the closest direct competitors are things like the Hyundai Santa Cruz, which I highly recommend you give a go. That's also a very good car. Um, it's spec'd differently, built differently. So you know, um, depending on what you want on it, etc., it may provide better or not so great value. Um, and then you have the Honda Ridgeline, of course. That's quite a bit more money. Uh, when you factor it in. So do keep that in mind. That is an expensive small pickup. This is a much more economical uh, small pickup truck. You could do the Nissan Frontier, the Toyota Tacoma. Those are bigger than this. Um, you you also don't, uh, no, you do get it in the Tacoma now, pardon me, but I was gonna say you don't get uh, hybrid options. You certainly don't in the, in the Nissan, um, but I think you do now in the in the Tacoma, right? There's a hybrid version of that in the 2024. I'll have to confirm, but anyway. Um, so, yeah, it it has a lot of competitors, but this, given its price point and what you get for it, uh, it competes quite well. One thing I wanted to touch on was the fact that this truck has a name. It's called the Maverick. I have to give Ford credit. Um, they name their cars, which I really like. You know, there's such a move um, in the industry, has been for years, for alphanumeric nomenclature, which bores the pants off me. The fact that this happens to be named after a very successful film probably helps. Um, I don't think those two things were uh, <laughs> were coordinated, but uh, I think it's a great name for a truck. To be honest, I can't believe it was available. Um, so yeah, I really, I dig that. You know, you can get passionate about names, right? You know, and all that kind of stuff. So uh, yeah, kudos to Ford for that. I really did want to mention it. Keep naming your cars, please. All the manufacturers. Hyundai's the same way. They give their cars names, not on the Genesis side, but you know, Hyundai and Kia, they name their cars too. Really good idea. So please do keep that up. Um, I guess that's that's going to do it for the Ford Maverick. I, uh, I got to say, I like this little car. It is... You know, if, you, if you're commuting as an example, this is a fantastic option. You know, I've driven the Hyundai Santa Cruz and that is uh, way thirstier, truthfully. And there is, no hy there is no hybrid option on that one that I'm aware of at the moment. So, you know, I mean, that may change uh, in the near future, but uh, for the time being, you know, if, yeah, I mean, if you, if you drive an F-150 because three times a year you need to pick up appliances or a piece of furniture, uh, give this some thought. You will be surprised at how useful it really is. Well, I guess that's going to do it for us. Um, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate your time. Uh, do uh, comment, subscribe, etc., etc., and we will see you all on the next video. Do take care and have yourself a fantastic day.